We have reported a lot here on those calorie counts now listed on menus in many big cities, and now those numbers will be listed on menus across the nation. And so we asked tonight, what do we know so far? Is it really changing the way American families eat? Here's Jeremy Hubbard. They are the supersized numbers hidden in our oversized meals, but not for long. The new proposal, part of the president's health overhaul law, would mandate calorie counts in large print at every big restaurant chain, convenience stores, even drive throughs and vending machines. What the FDA had in mind in proposing the menu changes at nearly half of the 600,000 eating establishments in this country. There are some exceptions. For instance, movie theaters would be exempt. Good thing. They, they probably don't want to remind you that a large popcorn and large regular soda can run 1,600 calories. That's nearly an entire day's worth of food. So why do movie theaters home to such unhealthy food get a pass here? Well, David, it's because this new rule applies to only businesses that get at least half their money from food sales and movie theaters, amusement parks, and places like that do not. So they can tell with the ride tickets or the movie tickets. Exactly. But back to the popcorn yes. for a second. Without the soda, what, what's the bucket of popcorn at? This right here is about 900 calories. That's a lot. 900 calories right there. But what about people like uh, yours truly who like to add the butter? Slather it on. That's going to cost you at least another 300 calories. 1,200, that's more than half of what we're supposed to have most of us in an entire higher day. It's going to cost you. Thank you. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think. <laughs> Jeremy Hubbard tonight. And finally tonight here, we've all heard the saying, bird's eye view, but we've never seen something quite like this. A bald eagle waiting for her three eaglets to hatch and 31 million people waiting and watching with her all through a live picture on the internet. Well, the eaglets are here and tonight, so is the man behind the tiny cameras. I spoke to Bob Anderson of Decorah, Iowa, just a short time ago. Bob, thanks so much for joining us. We're looking at the three little eaglets right now. Are they being fed? Yes, they are. The mother is feeding them uh, the remains of it. Looks like uh, a, a crow, actually. So it's a crow for dinner. Yes, they're eating crow. <laughs> oh, it's really amazing just how clear of an image you're able to capture and so close to the nest. Did you ever have any idea that 30 million people would be watching along with you? No, this is a, absolutely surprised me and, and overwhelmed me, having so many people around the world and thousands of teachers using it for a science curriculum. And you were saying severe weather kind of passed through earlier today and people all began calling you, reaching out to you online to, to make sure that the family was okay. Yes, there's a lot of worry warts out there. There really are. People are just falling in love with these babies and they're just worried if one doesn't get enough food and you know, or if one picks on the other one. And we can see the stick sort of in the way there. Give us an idea of just how big the nest is. How many pounds of sticks does it take to build what, what's a gigantic nest, right? Well, this nest is about six feet in diameter and about four feet deep and maybe weighs right now maybe eight or nine hundred pounds, close to a thousand pounds. But they add about one to two hundred pounds each year when they start sprucing it up. Well, Bob, thanks so much for inviting us to the dinner table tonight. I don't think I've ever <laughs> shared the dinner hour with three eaglets before. <laughs> You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Eagle enthusiast Bob Anderson of Decorah, Iowa tonight. That is really something to watch. I hope you have a great week ahead. Good night. Here, more proof that grandma knows best. It comes from the African savanna, but we bet it's pretty true in your family, too. John Berman introduces us to Joyce, who has her entire family listening. You can never go wrong with the idea that grandma knows best, especially when grandma weighs more than 5,000 pounds. We've long known that in the majestic world of elephants, it is the matriarch who guides the herds. But now we know just how skilled they are at leading. In a new study, researchers tested an African elephant herd's reaction to different lion roars. Lions are an elephant's most dangerous wild predators, with male lions being the most dangerous. When scientists blasted the sound of a male lion's roar, not a female's, it was the oldest elephant, a 66-year-old named Joyce, who could best detect the danger and herd the other elephants into a tight protected group, which increases their chance of survival. Grandma led the way. Scientists say it's the older female's vast life experience that gives them these skills. Plus, since they're too old to bear children anymore, they pay greater attention to group defense. So learn from the elephants and take care of those old ladies. Your life may depend on it. John Berman, ABC News, New York. Always listen to Grandma. Always listen to Grandma. And that is our report for tonight. I hope you have a good evening, a good night, and a great week ahead.